from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Pegaworld Inspire. Brought to you by Pegasystems. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante, and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Pegaworld Inspire 2020. With me is Alan Treffler, who's the founder and CEO. Alan, it's great to see you. I'm sorry we're online, I wish we were face to face. Well, someday I hope we'll have that opportunity, but this is the way things are getting done these days, for sure. I mean, you got to be a little bummed. You're an amazing speaker. I've seen you, you know, at conferences before. You have a, you have a deep voice, super in inspiring, you know, pun intended, I guess. So before we get into the Pega world and, and, and some of the takeaways that we expect from the event, for those in the audience maybe not familiar with, with Pega Systems, tell us about Pega. Well, um, you know, Pega is the leading provider of software that helps companies make smart decisions and get work done. It's used by <clears throat> many of the world's largest brands to create what's called a customer engagement engine with their clients so that they're able to really do a terrific job of creating the next best action, next best offer, knowing how to keep those customers engaged. And then once those customers are engaged, how to drive the correct work to completion. So it can be effective and efficient and highly automated. And that's and something so, with, with the recent yeah. crisis is more important than ever. And, and I think that it's, it's important to help people understand. I mean, you started this company 37 years ago. In, in your book, Build for Change, you, you, you talked about the early days of, of computer programming and assembly language where we were loading registers and so forth. And it talked about the progression of, of computer programming languages and even higher level languages. But you made the point of the book that it just didn't get to the point where businesses could actually interact with the computers. And that's really what PEG is all about, is having yeah. a, essentially a layer that you can communicate to in business terms. Well, it's all designed to be able to put business people back in control of their technology. You know, what I found was amazing when I started PEGA was that while other industries were making things easier for people to take advantage of automation, computer software seemed to be going in the wrong direction. And while I'll tell you now, we are well over 30 years later, it's gone massively in the wrong direction. It's enormously complicated. The whole way people design and build systems is completely separated from uh, the, the people who are actually going to be uh, using it. Stuff is passed over to programmers, comes back, and no one can look under the covers. We're entirely about creating a transparency there where the business people can actually work directly with IT to model their business. And from that model, our software literally writes the code. You know, Alan, again, that's something you talked about in your book and you talked about the reasons why. You know, rogue systems, shadow IT, et cetera, et cetera. And you're right. It has gotten more complex and, and as a result, and we're living this now with the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of organizations just aren't in a position to really respond. They don't have that resiliency, but I, I'm really interested in how your customers have reached out to you, how you're helping your customers through this crisis. Well, it's been fascinating because it's really been a moment that's proven the importance of having technology that uh, you, know, you build for change with, because the change has been prevalent and immediate and We've had the pleasure of being able to work with organizations who have rolled out in literally days important applications. For example, um, the largest hospital system in, in the country, actually, even the world, had over 200,000 employees who they needed to track and manage to make sure they knew their health, they knew their availability. We went from nothing to live in less than a week. And it's been mind numbing. We've now released that. COVID-19 tracker and manager for free to all of our client best. Well, I think it's important that, you know, I always, I always call it dog fooding. Companies don't like when I say that, they say drinking their own champagne, fine. But you gave a number of examples on your earnings call. Uh, there, was a, there was an APAC airline, which, you know, essentially you'd think would be shut down, but they're thinking ahead, recent customer, Bav the Bavarian government. Uh, you had a number of industry solutions and with the PPP and so many applications going into banks, uh, maybe talk a little bit about some of, the, some of the companies and some of your customers that were in a good position, and then maybe talk about the other side, maybe some folks that you see out there that maybe weren't in such a good position and maybe what they should be doing. 
Well, we've been fortunate in that our technology is so well suited to a lot of the problems that exist at this point. We give an organization a, a backbone. We give them the way to link together distributed workers so that work can be managed across an organization. It's so important now that so many people are suddenly working from home, and yet the organizations, our customers, need to be able to distribute, manage, and automate that work. And that's something that's always been, of course, strength of ours. So we've been able to do this in record time with some brand new clients, like that Bavarian government example, which went live in five days and was so thrilled with what they got that they actually put out a press release on their own, lauding Pega, which I'll tell you almost never happens without us asking, <laughs> uh, to, to major customers in the banking industry, for example, which are really trying to control the the flood of requests that are occurring. So we're pleased we can be that fast, but also handle things at massive scale. But you've also seen some exposures, you know, like Bill Belichick exposed their weaknesses. What, what have you seen just in the broad landscape of some of the, the, the organizations, you know, what, maybe there's financial, there's some balance sheet weaknesses, but there's also some infrastructure weaknesses. You know, IT, as you pointed out many times, is really the heart of competitive uh, uh, advantage today. What are some of the weaknesses that you see have, that have been exposed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, I think what's great is that our clients have actually seen those weaknesses themselves. And everyone has been scrambling to just make it literally one day, one week at a time. But now when they look at what we call their business architecture, it's not really a technology architecture, it's really how do you organize your business in a way that you can really make change happen fast but you can still be reliable and scalable. And I think some of the bad things that are happening is some of these organizations are responding with these little point applications or just trying to muddle through, even though they know that those will not be sustainable and may break under the load. Uh, we've been working with a lot of our clients to get them the outcomes, both really fast, but in a way that will be durable and fit in with a long-term architecture and that's what we're going to be talking about more at Pega World Inspire. Yeah, I think you're bringing up a good point. We've talked a lot on theCUBE about the dangers of paving the cow path, so to speak, and really trying to look beyond uh, what's comfortable. And which kind of brings me to my next question. I, I mean, a lot of people obviously very tactically focused right now, haven't had a lot of time to look beyond this pandemic, but we're starting to come out um, and we're obviously going to come out in, in waves and, and it's going to be maybe a, a longer cycle, but Look beyond, you know, the, 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 the near term, the next, you know, 20, 30 days. What do you see as how we come out of this and where companies should be focused? So what we're finding it's, I think, really interesting is there's almost a dual track mentality at our client. There's how do I get through the immediate term? How do I get through this month, perhaps the next six months? But they're also understanding that the things that have made the immediate so different uh, difficult are actually fundamental long-term gaps that they need to, to fix. They realize that too often they have built their systems and their technology in silos, in disparate places that don't really have a center and don't really understand the true nature of work. And that's exactly what Pegas Architecture does. And doing that in conjunction with bringing business and IT together can actually be powerful for both the immediate term, but also be the right framework, the right architecture for the business in the long term. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the future challenges. I mean, people, many C CEOs that I'm talking to are saying, look, it is what it is. We got to look at this as an opportunity. Where do you see the opportunities and tie that in to Pega World Inspire. What are people going to learn at, at, at Pega World to take advantage of those potential opportunities? Well, Pega World Inspire is going to be about both of the tracks that I mentioned. It's going to have actual Pega clients who've implemented systems at radical pace in, in days or weeks that really have helped their business fundamentally to teach other organizations what's possible in the immediate term. And equally importantly, perhaps even more importantly, we're going to be announcing and releasing a whole new foundation for how the longer term future of organizations is about weaving together 
disparate systems and their people in ways that will give them that future flexibility. Sometimes we call it being future-proof and bringing business and IT together in different ways so they can serve their customers better and be more efficient at the same time. So it's going to be a really exciting agenda on June 2nd when we hold the, the first virtual Pega World uh, for two and a half hours that day. Yeah, I mean, Pega World's always been a great event. I mean, many thousands of people, I think you're talking five or 6,000 people at the, the live physical event. I'm sure you're going to meet, meet uh, many, many more, reach many more uh, uh, in a virtual setting. Uh, so that's June 2nd. Um, bring us home, Alan. Give us the final word. Well, the final word is uh, go to pega.com and sign up for Pega World. It's free. It's going to be live Q&A with me. We'll be taking questions from what we expect will be 10 times anybody more, uh, anybody who's been to one of our physical events. And lots of great customer stories. It's very much at Pega World about telling success through the mouths and the visions of our clients. And I think that's what's gotten it such incredible ratings. And it would be terrific with this now free virtual format for everyone to attend. You can always tell a great conference by the percentage of customer content that's there. So really excited for, for Pega World Inspire. Alan, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and helping us preview the event. Best of luck. Thanks Dave, a pleasure. All right, and thank you for watching everybody again, June 2nd, Pega World Inspire, go sign up. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll be covering that event. So go to thecube.net and check out all that coverage, siliconangle.com, and we'll see you there.